The following is a tutorial on FLIR's Research IR Max software and how to acquire data. Now that we're connected to the camera, let's acquire some data. I simply go under this icon up here and choose the Edit Record Settings. From here I have three different record mode options. I can record to memory, record to disk, or disk periodically. When I record to memory, it buffers off memory and streams the data to a memory buffer, which then gets written to disk immediately after the recording. The advantage of recording to memory is if I'm recording for faster frame rates, I have less chance of dropping frames. My options are to record a certain number of frames or record for a certain number of seconds, and I can specify how many frames to block off as a buffer in memory. Based on my current computer settings, I get a tip strip that tells me I have a maximum buffer I can create of 9,474 frames. If I click on record to disk, now I'm writing directly to disk, so I can record for a specified number of frames, duration, or just put push a start and stop button. I can record much longer because I'm writing to disk and I have a much larger hard drive on my computer, but it's a little bit slower operation for the computer, so I may drop frames if I'm recording at faster frame rates. The last option is record periodically, and I think of this more like a data logger. I can record a specified number of frames every second or minute or a couple of minutes, and I can choose to stop after a specified number of samples I've recorded, or when I push a button to manually stop the recording. I can also write each one of the images as a separate file or as one continuous movie file. Today, I'm recording a LED that's flashing on and off, so I'm gonna record for a short duration, but at the higher speeds. My other record options is I can limit the record rate. So let's say that I'm recording from a camera that's much faster and I don't necessarily need that frame rate. I can reduce the frame rate as it comes into the computer. Or I can have another option here to display images while recording. Displaying images on a common day computer or a faster computer at five frames a second usually isn't a problem. But keep in mind that displaying images while you're writing the data to disk does use up valuable computer resources. So again, I may drop frames if I'm recording at faster frame rates. And the last one is I can enable frame skipping. Then I specify the folder that I want to record to. Here I chose a folder I created called Tutorial. Now let's look at the other options over here on the right hand side. And we'll go into more detail about triggering in the triggering tutorial. But I can create a pre-trigger buffer. And this lets me re record frames leading up to when I push the start button or a specific event happens. So this lets me see capture images leading up to a specific event. Then I have some other nice record conditions where I can trigger based on the header field or a measurement function I've created. Let's say something goes over a specific temperature threshold or falls below a certain threshold. Or if I just wanted to turn on at a specific time period. Think back to when we were talking about the periodic recording. Maybe I wanted to, uh, the test to start at midnight and finish up at 6 a.m. So when I come in first thing in the morning, my test is fully run, I have all my data and it's ready to go for me. The last thing that you'll definitely want to type in is a file name. And you can create a unique file name for the recording a movie or a snapshot. Here I have an A6703 SC camera with a 1x close-up lens. And I've created for the snapshot a prefix of snap, followed by the data and the lens I'm using, and then a count. Now the counter makes sure that I don't overwrite my file. So in this case, it's going to start at 2, and the next file is going to be 3 and 4 and so forth. I could also add a timestamp if you wanted to by just checking this box. Pretty much the same thing for recording, but here I've chosen a prefix of REC for recording instead of the snap prefix. Once we're all set up, we just hit OK, and now I can go up and click on record to record a movie or to record a single image if I wanted to. I also can click a hotkey to start recording or to record a single image as well. And we'll talk about that in the tutorial about hotkeys. For now, let me go ahead and click record and we'll see what happens. Now here I chose not to display images while I'm recording so we don't see any live update, but we are seeing that uh, it's chugging along and it's recording data at about 60 frames per second. And we recorded 10 seconds so we got about 600 frames, 601 in this case. So everything worked out great. I can also see the start and end time if I wanted to. When I'm all done, I hit close, and now I can scroll down, and there in my 
file menu, I see the image that I just recorded, double click it, and it starts playing back live. And there we can see the LED flashing. So that's the easy way to record data and all the recording options available in Research IR. For more information about Research IR, how to do analysis, share data, connect to the camera, please take a look at other Research IR tutorials. Thank you.